Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my newborn must-haves video. So now that I'm filming this, Rosie is six weeks old. Um, so we've had six weeks of trial and error to go on with all of these products. Um, and these are just things that have worked for me and my baby and I found have been really helpful. Obviously every baby is different, so what I found has worked for us might not work for you guys. But I just thought I'd share what I've discovered <laughs> during the uh, last six weeks. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, the first product I'm going to have to insert a clip of because Rosie is actually asleep on it right now and that is the Baby Move Cozy Dream Cushion. Now this cushion has been a lifesaver. For us, getting a sleepy head would have been fantastic but they were just out of our price range. Um, but I wanted something that she could sleep in that made her feel really snug and secure and that would fit inside her Moses basket. So I had a look all over the internet and I stumbled across the Baby Move Cozy Dream Cushion and it has been a lifesaver. Now last night Rosie slept 8 hours straight and she's been sleeping through the night pretty much since she was about 4 weeks old. So for the last 2 weeks she's been doing 7-8 hours overnight and she gains weight really well. I checked with the health visitor and she said just enjoy it. She's been gaining weight fantastically so if she's sleeping through the night then I must be doing something right so <laughs> I found that the cushion is really good for her and um, she likes to feel really secure she's a bit of a clingy baby she likes to sleep on people so if you just put her down straight into her basket she just immediately wakes up so yeah the cozy dream cushion has been really good it just has that little bit of support where it's got the cushion like around the head and under the bum um, and it just makes her feel nice and snug that alone though hasn't been the only saviour. So when she's sleeping in the uh, Cozy Dream cushion, you might have seen that she is swaddled in something. And that is the Swaddle Me Swaddle. Now this is a larger size, ready for when she outgrows her small size. This one's large. And these are fantastic. Um, if like me, you find swaddling a baby a little bit of a faff, then these are excellent because it's Velcro. Um, so I'll show you a clip of her in it. And if I've got one, I'll show you a clip of us wrapping her in the swaddle so you can see how easy it is to swaddle her. Now this again is something that makes her feel really nice and secure when she's asleep. Um, like I said, she likes to feel like she's all cosy and close and cuddled up to someone. So with her wrapped in that, she's nice and secure. She's got the cushion all around her so she feels really nice and like snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> so yeah, that has been amazing for us. She won't sleep without the swaddle now, which is a bit unfortunate unless she's sleeping on someone. Um, I'm trying to get her used to sleeping with just a blanket in the day, so I try and only use the swaddle at night, and when she has a nap in the day, I try and just use a blanket over her, um, unless I really need her to sleep because she's overtired, in which case I will just give in and swaddle her. Um, but these have been fantastic. They're so easy to use, and they really have been a lifesaver. So that, yeah, the swaddle and the baby move cushion combined has been something that was more affordable for us, um, and helped my baby to sleep through the night so yeah we think that these are fantastic part of her nighttime routine involves having a bath before bed and i know some people say oh you shouldn't bath your baby every night blah 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 my baby has fantastic skin she doesn't have any dry skin we don't use product um in the bath or every day we wash her hair like once a week just because she does get quite greasy hair and we use the Johnson's Baby at the moment because I don't have any other products and that's what people bought us and that's been working for her. But I digress. <laughs> what I want to talk about is the baby thermometer that we got for her bath. So me and Jack weren't overly confident that we were giving her the correct temperature water. Um, I think at first we were doing it too cold. We haven't done it too hot but we were so scared of burning her that I think we did it a little bit under temperature when we started running her baths. So we got this and it is so cute, it's in the shape of a little turtle. You can get other um, characters, and we just got this one off Amazon. Everything that I've mentioned as well will be linked down below, so you can go find it if you wanna check it out. Um, but this is really good. It beeps if it's too cold and flashes green. It beeps if it's too hot and flashes red. And then if it's the perfect temperature, then it doesn't beep. It just displays the temperature and the time on here as well. Um, it also has like a countdown feature, or well, a count up feature, so you can see how long your baby's been in the bath for because they say not to bathe them for longer than five minutes when they're a newborn. So this has been really helpful for us. 
it gives us the perfect temperature bath. Rosie absolutely loves having a bath. When she's in the bath, she kicks her little legs around and she just loves being in water. So much so that we've already enrolled her onto Water Babies, which she'll be starting in September. So we're really excited for that. Um, but yeah, she just loves bath time. And that's daddy daughter time as well. So I don't do her bath, Jack does her bath for her. And this just gave him the extra bit of confidence that he was getting the correct temperature water and that he wasn't gonna either burn her or freeze her basically and yeah she just loves bath time and we felt a lot more confident since using this and it is really cute and playful as well so when she's a bit bigger you know it works as a toy in the bath and um, she can play with it and it's not going to cause any bother so yeah this is something that I definitely recommend if like us you're not overly confident about getting the temperature right on the bath Sticking with the theme of temperature, we live in a flat that gets very, very hot and at the minute it's summertime. Rosie was born in July, we were going through that heat wave and I was so worried that she was going to overheat. So I bought a room thermometer and the room thermometer that I bought was the Grow Egg. Now the thing that I like about the Grow Egg is that it glows certain colours. So if it is too hot, it will glow red. If it is too cold, it will go blue. If it's slightly warm, then it has like an orange glow. And when the temperature is just right, then it's yellow. So it's really handy at night. You can just sort of peek in and see the glow. You don't have to read the exact temperature. But it does also display the temperature on here. And it's not just like 21 degrees, 22 degrees. It gives you the point as well. So it'll be 21.4, for example. Um, so the ideal room temperature for a baby to sleep in is 16 to 20 degrees. Um, we, it's impossible to get it that cool in our flat half the time. Um, this is usually sitting on around 22 to 23 degrees. Anything over 24 is too hot. So this just gives us a rough idea of when we need to put the fan on in the room, when we need to take layers off of her, put layers on her. Um, yeah, just so we can make sure that she's comfortable and it's the right temperature for her. So a lot of the time she does sleep in a vest and just has the swaddle because it gets so warm in here and we can see that it's too warm. It's just too hot for her to sleep in a sleep suit. Um, so yeah, we've just found this really helpful just to make sure that the room isn't too hot and if it does go into that red zone then we know that we need to cool it right down or start taking layers off of her so that she doesn't overheat. Um, so yeah, this has been really good as well. Another favourite of mine is the baby sling. So we've got a funky flamingo baby wrap and I'll just show you the little uh, leaflet here that came with it. Um, so this is really handy, like I said we have a bit of a clingy baby and when we go and do a food shop, if she's unsettled then, and if she's going through one of them phases where she just wants to be held, sometimes it's just easier to do the food shop with her in the sling close to you. Another reason that I found it really handy is that I live in a flat and I'm on the first floor. So trying to carry her down the stairs, the pram down the stairs and a changing bag down the stairs all at the same time is impossible because I just don't have enough hands. So if I have her in the sling wrapped and close to me, I can carry her in the sling, I can have the pram in one hand, I can have the changing bag over my arm and we can make it down the stairs because we don't have a lift in our flat unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I found this really handy. Jack's also put her in the sling and done the hoovering and it's sent her straight to sleep if she's been fussy. So yeah, like I said, she's one of them babies that just likes to be really nice and snug and close to you. She likes to be on your chest all the time. So this is a really handy way to get things done when you like need to be hands-free. Um, she really likes being in it when she gets settled and when I was walking around Aldi, within five minutes she'd gone straight to sleep and we managed to get the food shop done and pop across to Asda without any dramas. Um, whereas before we've had times where she's screamed the whole way around Aldi in her pram just because she's going through one of them phases where she just wants to be held. And all babies have them phases, you know, her nappy was clean, she'd been fed, she wasn't overly tired but she just wanted a cuddle. So yeah. This is really handy for when you either want to be hands free or if like us you have a baby that likes to be close to you and um, so it means you can keep your baby close and get things done all at the same time. So yeah, excellent. Moving on, another lifesaver for us has been Infocol. Now when I started breastfeeding I thought oh breastfed babies they don't get colic, they don't get gassy really, blah 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 blah. Not the case with our baby, um, she had tongue tie which I think I mentioned in a previous video but I'm going to do a whole video about breastfeeding and 
all that with her in a separate video and my breastfeeding favourites. However, this is just um, something that's really helped us because with our tongue tie, she was taking down a lot of air when she was feeding. And now that she's had her tongue tie snipped, she still is in that habit of sort of guzzling the milk down and taking down a lot of air and getting quite gassy, even though she is breastfed. So we will wind her, but sometimes she just has trouble getting rid of that wind, whether it's going up or going down. And we found that having the inf cult really helped. It's something that we didn't buy um, prior to her arrival, but something that I wish we had already had in the house. Um, we had to send our, uh, well, I had to send Jack's mum out to go and grab her some because I just needed something that was gonna help to relieve her. Um, you do also have gripe water, but gripe water can't be used within the first month. So this can be used from birth. So if you have a baby that's really struggling to get their wind up, to get rid of their gas, we found that this was really helpful just to sort of ease her tummy a bit and just help her to get that gas up or get the gas down, whichever way it needs to go. Yeah, so this was really handy. And something that I think is worth having on hand, um, we tried all the baby massage, tried having a bath, did this and that and the other, and nothing was helping because I didn't want to just give her medicine unless I thought it was necessary, but this has really helped. So I'd say it's worth having on hand or worth considering if you do have a particularly colicky, gassy baby that struggles to get their wind up. This has been excellent. And my final newborn favourite is something that really helped me. Because I had a caesarean, I find that bending over to change her nappy was really difficult. But we don't have a particularly big flat, so we didn't have room for a separate changing table, changing station in her nursery. So I'll insert a clip of what it is that I'm talking about. But we have an over-the-cot um, changing table. So it meant that I could change her while standing up. I didn't have to bend over. Um, and it just sort of... Yeah, it's nice to have that separate changing area, even though we didn't have the space for a separate changing table. Now, I still am planning to do a nursery tour, um, but we've just been having to sort of reorganise and reshuffle things in here. And I didn't want to do the nursery tour until I had pretty much everything where I wanted it to be. Um, but this is something that I would really recommend if you think you don't have the space for a changing table then this is something that's really handy and obviously I didn't know I was going to have a caesarean but I bought this in case that I did have a caesarean just so we had somewhere we could change her where I wouldn't have to bend over and it wouldn't be particularly uncomfortable for me. So yeah, I found this really helpful, really handy and I definitely recommend it if like me you don't have a lot of space but you would like somewhere where you can change your baby. Um, so like I said, I have linked all of the products that I've mentioned down below. I'm probably going to do another video on products that I regret um, buying or things that we haven't really used much separately. And I'm also planning to do a separate video on, once again, sirens going past the flat. And I am planning to do a separate video all on my breastfeeding favourites and things that really helped me during the first few weeks of breastfeeding. So do stay tuned if you want to see those videos, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss them. Um, my Slimming World videos will be starting up next week, so do stay tuned for those and I'll hopefully be getting some... Oh, I've gone out of focus. Am I back in focus? There we go. And I will hopefully be getting some um, more vlogs up as well if you're into the family vlogs. A lot of you have been commenting on them, giving me really nice comments. So don't forget to comment down below if you have anything nice to say. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos and stay tuned for my next one. Bye!